Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to introduce you to a device which I believe may just be the best braille display on the market in 2022. Now, if you're a braille display user, you'll know that that is a fairly big claim to make. And I'm going to be honest, it really does depend on your needs. However, I think this device is such a great all-round braille display, can be made so flexible depending on different people's needs. It really is one of the best options out there. And that is the Mantis Q40. The Mantis Q40 is produced by American Printing House for the Blind and is sold by Humanware in the UK. Unlike most braille displays, it has a QWERTY keyboard, which is already a feature that sets it apart. It has 40 cells, and I'm going to hold it up so those of you who can see a bit will get a bit of a better look at the device. So on the kind of top facing part of the device, where if you'd lie it flat on the table, it'd be facing upwards, you have a QWERTY keyboard. Below that is a line of really small buttons, and these are what we call cursor routing keys. So they control where the cursor is on the line below it, which is a line of braille. Now, at the moment, there's just a fixed um, few words on this line because I haven't pressed anything, but this line of Braille can move as with every other refreshable Braille display. I'm going to turn it so that the front part of the device is facing outwards and you've got five buttons, four buttons, which are thumb keys or navigation keys, two longer ones and two shorter ones. Then in the middle, a round button, which is the home button. On the left hand side of the device, as it is in front of you, there is a charging port, the power button and a USB port. On the back of the device, there is a slot where you can insert an SD card, very much the same as the USB port. You can use this to add extra storage to the device, although it does come with some internal storage. So let's look at a few features of the device by going through the main menu. So the first option on the main menu is editor. Within this, you can create documents, you can read documents, and it's a great way for taking notes, whether that's in a meeting or writing a shopping list, anything like that. So when you go into that menu, you've got create file, open file, recently saved, and I really like this. This is a newer feature with the latest update. You can view, I think it's your 10 most recently saved documents. That's really handy if you want to find something that you know you've used recently and editor settings. There is also a braille editor, which is the next item on the main menu. And this is really exciting because it was one of the features I found um, was unfortunately missed out of the Mantis when it was first on the market. And that is a braille editor, which enables you to create .brf files. And as many of you braille readers will know, .brf files are Braille files. This means there's no translating between Braille and print involved, or even between different grades of Braille. So what you write in Braille is what you get. It does mean all the Braille formatting is preserved as well. So it's really, really good to have that, um, especially for someone like myself, who often works in multiple languages within the same document. So I might create a BRF file if I'm doing some work where let's say I'm learning a new language and I want to sometimes write in English and sometimes write in the other language. And it's really just for myself, so that, that's very useful. Terminal. The terminal is what you use to connect this device to other devices, such as a phone, tablet or computer. Um, you can connect either by USB or by Bluetooth. And I found the connection to be really, really good so far. I've had the device for, ooh, I want to say, got to be, I'm going with over a year, but I can't actually remember when, when I actually got the device, which is funny that I've, I've had it a long time and, and time just flies away. One nice thing about one of the later updates is that you can easily switch between connections. So let's say you've got your device connected by Bluetooth on your phone and your computer. You can very, very quickly switch between those two connections, which saves you a load of keystrokes. Then there's the library. So you can read various different um, types of books on this device. You can also read PDF files, which you'll find later on in the file manager. But um, within the library, you know, you have bookshelves. So if I open it up, um, 
then I can find all the different books on my device, which is really exciting. So I've got book list, recently read, search, close. And so that's nice because that's a specific application for reading. Then you've got the file manager. So that's a more generic file manager where you can kind of search the device, whether that's the internal storage or something like an SD card to find a file. Calculator, so any basic calculations you want to do, you can do that. Date and time is fairly self-explanatory. Settings, online services. Now online services is kind of exciting because you can connect it to Bookshare or NFB Newsline. And once your device is on the Wi-Fi network, you can then download books or publications directly from these services. Obviously, these are very US centric services. And my hope is that we will get things like RNIB Bookshare and RNIB reading services on the device, hopefully in the near future that, that I've got my fingers crossed for that. The user guide, which obviously just helps you get set up with the device and um, look for any information you might need and then power off. So let's go into the settings because I think there are some pretty cool settings that do make this device stand out. So you've got language profile. This is really, really nice. So this is where you can control the language profile of the braille display. So I mentioned earlier that I work in multiple languages, so I do speak Spanish. So sometimes I'll be reading a document that's entirely in Spanish and I want to switch to Spanish braille and, and certainly Spanish Braille input as well. And I can do that in language profile and you can set up multiple profiles and easily switch between them without having to go back into settings. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So obviously this is to get you um, set up. Change language, that will change the actual language of the device beyond just kind of the Braille profile. Activate exam mode. And so this is a great one if you're a student. And, and I really want to emphasize this if anyone's watching who maybe is a teacher of blind students. So this device can be used when taking exams. You can put it into exam mode and then the student won't be able to access their other documents. So that's obviously a really great feature. If this is their primary device and is something they're comfortable using, they can definitely still use this for an exam. There's also a government mode, which when you purchase the device, you can request for it to be put in government mode. And that means all these features that I'm talking about now won't actually be available on the device. So there will be no editor or anything like that. And you might be thinking, well, why would anyone want to do that? Well, if you work at a government job, you may have quite high security clearance and you may not actually be able to bring in devices that have any kind of internal storage. So what that will do is just turn this into a braille display to be used with something like a phone or a computer so that you can still use it in the workplace. Software update, that's to check for updates. They are downloaded over Wi-Fi, which is great. And then close that menu. So why do I say the best all round display? Well, I think the build is really nice to start with. The braille quality feels really great. The keyboard feels good. It's a fairly solid device whilst not being too heavy. So I can really comfortably carry it around, but I also feel like if I knock it, it's not going to break. And that's really reassuring. Um, I want my braille display to last. I don't want to be getting it repaired. I've had to make no repairs on this device in the year or more that I've had it as well. And it's, it's had some fairly significant use. So that's a good thing. The fact that it has a QWERTY keyboard, I do think is a great feature. It's the only device on the market, well, the only braille display that has a QWERTY keyboard. And what it does mean is if you're a really fast typer, then you can obviously pair this device with your phone or with your computer and get going writing really fast. Equally, when I just take notes on the device itself without connecting it to anyone else, I can type very, very fast. So it means I take notes super quickly, but you can still enter into six key braille input. So if you do want to write a BRF file, for example, you can use the F D and S key along with J, K and L to write in Braille. So you can press down multiple keys at the same time um, to write in Braille. And you don't just have to do that when creating BRF files. If I wanted to go into the editor and do create a file, I could type using my QWERTY keyboard. And I've typed, hello, this is a file. But now I can hit the F12 key and it's come up with Braille keyboard. So now,
what I'm doing is actually um, writing in Braille on the device, but using the Braille key input. So I'm using these six keys. So when I wrote the letter H, I wrote, I used F, D and K and pressed those down at the same time to make an H. And I wrote, hello, this is a file for a second time. So I'll take this out of Braille key input to put it back to standard quote keyboard. And I will not save this file because I don't really need to keep that. But I wanted to illustrate how you can still type in Braille on this device or, you know, use that QWERTY keyboard to type that way. One massive advantage, at least for me, of having a QWERTY keyboard is that when I connect it to my phone, I don't have to connect it as a Braille display. I just connect it through Bluetooth as a keyboard. And it does mean then that when I'm controlling my phone, I'm using standard Apple keyboard commands. So I'm quite used to using a Bluetooth keyboard with my phone, but whenever I've used a Braille display, I've had to learn different ways of doing it. Because most Braille displays just have the six keys plus um, your backspace and your line down and your space bar. And so if you want to perform some kind of command on your phone, you have to learn different keyboard commands, which are completely unique to a Braille display. With this, obviously, with it being a QWERTY keyboard, I can just use those standard commands, which is really great for me because it means I don't have to learn a load of extra stuff. And that's the same when I connect it to my laptop. It's just connected as a keyboard, so I don't have to have my regular USB keyboard plugged in as well, which I normally would with another Braille display. The one small downside to this is it's obviously quite a small keyboard, so it doesn't have that number pad with um, the keys kind of on the right hand side of the keyboard. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you would still have to connect your USB keyboard. But I think for most people, it really does work so well and actually you're not going to feel lost without those keys. One thing I think is, is great is how easy it is to collaborate with other people using this device. So if I've got it connected to a phone or a tablet, for example, and I'm working on a document with someone, we can slide this keyboard back between the two of us and they can type on this and so can I. And then I obviously can use the line of Braille to read. And that's really great. And I also think for a deafblind person, it could certainly in a pinch be used as a communication device with hearing people. Obviously, most deafblind people will have their own form of communication that they prefer and their own devices. So I'm not suggesting this is the best, but I do think if you were in a situation where this was all you had and maybe your phone, you could connect this up and quite easily then communicate with someone else, which is obviously very, very useful. Now, there is a negative and that is the price of this device. So it does cost a little over £3,000 in the UK. Now that is a huge amount of money. It is very standard for a Braille device and unfortunately that is the case at the moment with Braille displays and refreshable Braille technology. There are cheaper devices such as the Orbit Reader which I think will set you back around £500. So a fairly significant difference. What I've personally noticed with the Orbit is that it isn't the most reliable device. It does quite often need repairs. It's very very noisy. So when we listen to the braille on this device refreshing yeah it does make a noise you know you can you can hear it so i'm going to open up a document here and um let you kind of hear what it sounds like so you can probably hear the device refreshing and the braille moving so it does make a noise but a device like the orbit makes a significantly louder noise so i do think this is much more discreet in lectures and meetings and for me that is something that i find very important but more than that it's just how robust this device is and how much it, how much it can do that i think really does set it apart from some of the cheaper displays it is, as I said at the beginning, a 40 cell device. So if you're looking for something significantly bigger, like an 80 cell device, this isn't going to cut it. Um, but I think for most people, 40 is a pretty standard amount of cells and kind of what you would be expecting. Really because of all these reasons, I do think it's the best all round device on the market. It offers a good range of standalone features. It isn't marketed as a standalone braille note taker. What it is, is a refreshable display, but with some standalone features. And as such, you know, I think the features it offers are really good. Um, it 
hasn't presented me with any technical problems. I can read various different formats, you know, text files, Word documents, PDF files. And for me, that's very, very important. I can read that range of files. I can also download books to read, which is something, again, for me, really important. Um, the flexibility with exam mode and government mode, again, it's something which I think makes it a, a great device for a whole range of people. And for this reason, it just is the best device on the market as far as I'm concerned. If you're a strong Braille reader or even someone who's really getting started but knows you're going to be using Braille in a lot more settings, I do think that you should strongly consider the Mantis Q40 as a device that might work well for you. It's worth reaching out to APH if you're in the US and Humanware if you're in the UK to ask them if you can take a look at this device and try it out. I know certainly Humanware are very, very accommodating and will let you take a look at their devices even if you're not sure if you want to buy it. So it's well worth taking a look if you're currently on the fence. I do want to point out that nobody asked me to make this video. It is my genuine opinion. This is a device that I own. It wasn't given to me so I could tell you how great it is. I just happen to think that it is a really solid device, that it works really well, that it does everything it claims to do and the updates are still coming and the, the you know, APH and Humanware are working to bring us new features and that's really important for me as well is that this device is still being supported, that fixes are getting made whenever they need to and, you know, on top of that, that new things are being added, which is something that I find extremely helpful to know. So definitely check this device out if you're kind of looking for a new Braille device or even if you're just curious. If you like this video and you want me to bring you more reviews and looks at different blindness tech, then please like the video, please comment if you have anything to add, and please subscribe to my channel. The more subscriptions I have, the more features I have access to, and the more content I can bring you.